Um, sometimes the pharyngeal technique can be can be useful and and help extend your range. Uh, I don't think it's difficult to learn, but you know everyone has to really find their own voice and realize when it's appropriate to use it and how best to maximize its benefit. Uh, and a good voice teacher or a voice coach can cover a multitude of sins from both the client and patient and sometimes even from me. So uh, I cannot stress enough how important it is to work as a team uh, when you are trying to get the best voice that you can. Big things, always worry about reflux allergies and obesity and look for overall health. There was, you know, there's the product entertainer secret, but what I have found is that they have a lot of other secrets. Um, <laughs> unless you're Amy Winehouse, who is completely fine with actually being high while she's performing. Um, and so then it's not a secret. But uh, these types of things going on are clearly not good for you and will shorten your career, if not your life. And again, I'll underscore with this picture of Trevi Fountain. Hydration is wonderful for vocal folds, so I recommend it, encourage it for everyone. And I think that that is all that I have, rather than going back and try to show you some of these videos. This yoga was rather wrong. This isn't that bad. So that one there, and that one there. Her, the, the one that you just saw, looked like this before that. And so when I see it, um, it you know it depends if it's someone who is seeing me because they have some sort of uh, chronic cough, then I worry more about it, and I'd be more inclined to take them to the OR, use the laser, or dissect that out, and take care of it on the front end to make sure we don't get into the situation of a vocal hemorrhage. But in and of themselves, those are not terrible things to see, but you do have to keep an eye on it. And this is the reflux larynx. So you see all this irritation and stuff in the back. And these vocal folds are not healthy either. I mean, the, the whole area is very red and swollen and just doesn't function well. And two weeks of Nexium did a wonderful thing for her. And this is my stockbroker. Bad reflux, this huge proliferation of tissue there because again, the swallowing tube opens back there. So this is the area that's really susceptible to damage. You see, they do vibrate, but the, 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 the skin lining here is thickened and there's some white patches on it. It's not healthy. It's clearly not healthy. And his voice was not healthy. But he was happy with that, and so I just followed him to make sure we weren't dealing with uh, any of those white patches progressing to anything that looked like a precancerous lesion. And I still see him. He is still fine with his voice, and so we're good. <laughs> and that is all that I have. Anyway, yeah, okay, I got two. <laughs> it's the same question. Okay. We're the two oldest ones probably in the room. Oh. Well, anyway. oh, no. oh. <laughs> we, had, we had puberty and we had pregnancy, but we didn't have menopause which really affects singing, and I just thought maybe, we, we collectively thought maybe you could just hint at that. It, it, you know, it, 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 is a, it is a similar phenomenon, but, uh, you know, a different point along the same continuum, that as those levels decrease, the lubrication and the flexibility that, that the estrogen and progesterone content brought you earlier also decreases. And so it's not impossible, of course, to keep singing, but uh, it does sometimes require a little bit of retraining because the effort is different. And also, uh, sometimes, again, the, the flexibility and lubrication of those tissues is a little different. So increasing that water intake, um, I'm not necessarily a fan of estrogen replacement therapy because there was some risk involved with that. Um, but uh, I think for most uh, perimenopausal women, just a little bit of attention to the technique will help tremendously. Uh, and then, uh, but also the realization that you know, the, the season in which your voice was able to do anything you wanted it to do effortlessly might not be continuing. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Yes. You know, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, although that's the latest Sam Shepard play on Broadway, so, you know. It's, a dead horse? Yeah, beat a dead horse. Okay. Beating a dead horse is the name. But, you know, it's easy, I think, er, to deal with the obesity end 
of the food disorder thing. But I'm dealing with an awful lot of actors who are on the anorexia end. And I think... Oh, I, I would disagree. I don't think it's easier to deal no, with I mean either to, to end address of the it. No, I mean to address it in a lecture format. And I think that we should have that counterbalancing element. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because there is a lot of muscle fatigue that goes along with not having enough nutrition in all the pressures to be real skinny as vocalists. Absolutely. And um, I'm seeing that with the action of the diaphragm. You know, there's a lot of that with the diaphragm and the abs. And I would, you know, just welcome some comments about that and the things as well as the Deborah Boyd situation. My comment is that you are absolutely correct. Um, uh, malnutrition and malnourishment clearly uh, has its uh, deleterious effects on the voice as well. And I'll, I'll tell you one of the places that I was most struck by that is uh, when I went to South Africa, uh, to Durban, to the opera school that they have there. And there were some of the most beautiful, melodious voices I had ever heard. But many of them could not get through an aria because they hadn't eaten. And you know, th th these were very, very thin singers with huge voices. Uh, but you know, you could just see that the energy level was so much lower, and so you were absolutely correct. Yes, ma'am. We had these ladies bring up the aging effect on uh, women's voices. Is there an aging effect on men's voices? Yeah, you know, it's 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 similar thing in that uh, every uh, every part of the body ages. So the same thing happens to men. Uh, usually, it's a little later, um, so that true change, true age-related voice changes, are really more of a phenomenon of uh, 65, 70, and up. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it's just a cumulative effect of badness that makes people say that my voice aged this way. When yeah, if you smoked for 50 years, yeah, that's probably true. But it wasn't the age; it was what you were doing. Um, but true age-related things, you, you get loss of tone. Uh, as the testosterone level goes down, so does the muscle tone, the bulk that's there. So, you know, men have the, the same issues in terms of creakiness in their voice, breathiness in their voice, all of that happens to men as well. It just tends to be a little bit later. Does that answer your question? Okay. Is that it? All right.